Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to episode two in our playthrough of Point Blank Vias for Victory, the card-based World War II tactical combat game from Lock and Load Publishing and designed by Sean Drulinger. Our Canadian infantry behind Juno Beach are knocking on the door of the German-held farmhouse. Can the Germans hold the objective or will the Canadians rest it away? Let's jump back into the action and find out. Let's do a quick recap of our current situation. At the end of our last episode, our two Canadian infantry squads, one by legend, led, led by Sergeant Tromley, and then the other one moving here on the right-hand side on their own with the Bren machine gun, had advanced forward and starting to pull within range of their objective, the farmhouse, which is held by Sergeant Dolis and his second-line infantry squad with their rather deadly MG-34. Now, at the very end of the previous episode, this Canadian squad and Sergeant Trumley got uh, stuck in the wire here. And I, I made a mistake, and the designer, Sean Drulinger, reached out to me and said, hey, this is a little bit of an error. Turns out that if you drop smoke without making a move, just on its own, you can only put it in the sector that you're in. If your squad is moving as they drop smoke, which is an allowed action, then you can put smoke where you are or in any an adjacent uh, sector. So we couldn't technically just drop smoke in this area. However, that actually solves a problem for the Canadian infantry. The, what we're gonna use is that unit action that we used. We're gonna use it to do an in-sector move instead, which allows them to drop smoke adjacent, and it also adds one fatigue. So we've kind of fixed the problem. Actually, it works out to the Canadians' advantage because what they're trying to do, first for the Canadians, their objective is gonna to be to clear this wire, once they get the wire clear, they're going to need to try to find some good cover here on, on close to the farmhouse with either of these squads as they move forward and then attack the farmhouse. Sergeant Dolis, of course, and the second line squad are gonna be trying to chew them up with their machine gun and hold steady as the Canadians advance. So let's continue now with the Germans turn. So in the upkeep phase of the next turn, the question is what do we want Sergeant Dolis and his second line infantry squad to do? Now they have some woods terrain here that's kind of saved off to the side. They could drop it here, but that actually works, I think, more to the advantage of the Canadians than it does to the, the Germans. Ideally, what we'd like to do is to have Sergeant Dolis kind of get his troops in line with some weaker terrain here. Something in clear or road would be really good to force the infantry, the Canadians when they go forward to get stuck in that or force the Canadians to kind of delay and stall while they try to find a better approach route. So we don't really have anything to do in the upkeep phase here except for uh, having Sergeant Dolis uh, kind of come back to full strength here and ready himself. So now the question is, what do we do in the Germans' turn? And I want to take a moment now and just talk a little bit about line of sight because there's some kind of special, the rules for line of sight I think are very, line of sight are very consistent, but they're not necessarily straight line because of the, the dynamic nature of this mat and how you use it. And you don't even need to use the mat. You can play this on a bare tabletop. The mat is basically just to kind of structure some of the squares and things like that, make it a little bit easier to get things in line, but you don't need it. And the way line of sight works is if it's between units in the same column or the same row, you just look to see if there's blocking terrain in the way or if there were happen to be two degrading terrain elements. This is kind of like half blocking. Two of these half blocking amounts to a full blocking. Right now, we can see that between Sergeant Dolis and Sergeant Trumley's units here who are in the same area, they've got this blocking smoke so they can't see each other and they can't fire. Now, this gold band here that we're seeing divides the half of the battlefield. This up top half is the German half and the bottom half is the Canadian half. In cases like that where the units are on both sides of this gold band and in different areas, but in different columns basically. In that case, you trace the line of sight, it has to be able to clear the gold band that each side is in. So the Canadians trying to spot, say for example, this farmhouse or Sergeant Dole is trying to spot them. You gotta check from here to here. That's good for the Canadian side. They're okay, there's nothing here that's blocking line of sight. Sergeant Dolis, however, here to here, this is blocking line of sight. So the line of sight between Sergeant Dolis and this infantry squad over here is blocked as well as it is blocked here. Now there's some special rules that are used if both units are on the same side, but it's basically that same way to apply a consistent principle. So with that in mind, Sergeant Dolis really can't fire at anything. The second infantry, and they, they really don't want to move. They want to stay in their cover here and hold the objective. So we're going to have Sergeant Dolis now we're gonna burn a card here and have Sergeant Dolis perform a recon action to see if we can get some better bad terrain to force the Canadians to move into on either one of these aspects here. So let's take care of that first. We will throw this um, rally and discard card. We're gonna discard that to get Sergeant Dolis performing an action here and he is going to, we'll get him ready. Now we're gonna pick two terrain and they're looking for something really bad to mess the Canadians up. That's pretty good, a stream. 
Stream is a minus one terrain and I think it causes other bad natured elements here too. And more wire. These are really good spottings by Sergeant Dolis that he can kind of toss in the way here of the Canadians. We can only keep one of them, however, so we're gonna take a second to think about which one we wanna keep. So th this has some interesting consequences here. The stream is a minus one terrain, which means it's an advantage firing onto units, and you have to clear this stream, much like you do wire, in order to be able to advance out of the sector. So this is particularly devastating. The other thing about this is that when stream is in a sector, the, assuming that your troops are kind of lined up with stream, the smoke has to be removed. So smoke and stream can't appear in the same sector. So this could be a very interesting play. The, the same thing, wire could be interesting because it's gonna leave the smoke there, blocking the line of sight over here. Canadians would have to advance and try to get, it, it creates all kinds of issues here. So I think we're gonna do, however, just for the sake of trying something different, we're gonna have Sergeant Dolis keep the stream terrain for play, and then we're gonna to toss the wire, although both of them would have worked out pretty well. So with that in mind, now what we have to do next is to discard a card to basically pass on the Germans' turn. So we are going to have them discard, we're gonna discard the unit action and the ready action here. I'm not sure if that's the right choice, but we'll, we'll run with it. So with that, the Germans are done now. We're gonna have them pick two cards to get back up to five actions in their deck. And if we scroll up here, we can see what they've got right now. The two that they pick are Movement and Recon. Recon's not very good. We'll just burn through that one for Sergeant Dolis to do some Recon and Movement there. But that, all, all things look pretty, pretty steady in terms of the card selection for the Germans. Let's go to the Canadians' turn. So the first thing we have to do in the upkeep phase here is to sort through the Canadians' movement and things like that from the previous turn. Sergeant Trumley is going to be uh, readied. I think the movement happens first, but it doesn't really matter too much. Now what happens in wire, when you have no other terrain there and you clear it by an insector move, is that it gets replaced with clear terrain. So I'm just gonna look through the deck here, pull out a clear terrain, and then we're going to drop it into this wire square and then reshuffle the deck. And I'll do that off camera. So the wire is gone. The line of sight is still blocked. Sergeant Tromley and his infantry squad basically have solved the problem. They've got past the wire now and they have an option if they would like to advance up on Sergeant Dolis' Dulles, position here. Now the question is, what do we want to do? And, and this is one of the things that would, ideally we'd really like to have happen here is that the Canadians could desperately use a recon action and they really don't have that ability so they, they, they can't do it without a card on it really. So that problem is they've got to kind of advance blind. You can see these almost as kind of infantry troops and kind of learning their way through and Sergeant Trumley kind of trying to increase his skill here as a leader, but they have to go forward a little bit blind. We know, now in a two player game, we wouldn't know that the Germans had that stream card, but as the Canadians, we kind of know it. We've got to assume now anyway, with two cards in the Germans that are holding there, that one of them is gonna be bad terrain. So if we send Sergeant Tromley forward here, it could get pretty bad. So we're gonna have, we got a little bit of time. We're gonna have our Canadian infantry squad over here move forward with our action this turn. So Canadians are gonna burn, uh, they have a unit action card, which means you can do any action that exists on the squad. They have a movement action on their squad. So we're gonna have this Canadian infantry squad over here use a movement action, which is going to do a few things here. It's gonna increase their fatigue to level two, which is there, and we're going to drop a movement icon on them. All right, so we've, uh, we've noted that they're moving forward. We've discarded that card. We're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna discard another card here. Uh, let's discard. We have a reinforcements card here, which basically is a movement card in this scenario because there's no reinforcements. So we're gonna have the Canadians discard that to activate Sergeant Tromley. He is going to ready his forces, which basically means to get rid of this fatigue. We're gonna reduce one fatigue on this infantry squad. So they're back up to kind of full energy. And with that, the Canadians have finished their turn. Let's go to the Germans' turn. Before we go to the Germans' turn, one thing that we need to do is to draw two cards to bring the Canadians up to full strength in their card deck here. And interestingly enough, they draw a recon card. So that's a huge help to the Canadians because they can now draw two uh, terrain tiles and basically scout out ahead to figure out where they're gonna wanna put them. So a huge draw for the Canadians here. The question that the Germans face in this upkeep phase, as we can kind of ready, ready Sergeant Dolis a little bit of out of sequence, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, do we wanna drop that stream down here? Now, if we drop it here, it clears the smoke and opens up the line of sight to this unit, but it allows this unit to move forward into terrain that's going to be randomly determined. So that's a little bit of a risk here, but given the fact that we know now the Canadians have a recon card, which we wouldn't know in two player, 
I think it's gonna make sense to really mess up this terrain here. Give us a line of fire on this and take the risk that hopefully this infantry squad won't find really good cover when they move up here. So let's just make this interesting a little bit. We're gonna have the Germans in the upkeep phase shift their position so they've got a firing line down the stream here and that removes the smoke in there because you can't have smoke in a stream in the same Se uh, same sector here. So with that done, now this also creates a situation, oh, this actually works out really well now, because they've shifted their firing position in their action phase. They have a line of sight on Sergeant Tremley here and his infantry squad in the clear terrain. It's degraded, but we can have them open fire, which works out perfectly. Now they could actually fire on this one's over here, these over here on the road as well. Oh, lots of options. Let's think for a second. So, so Sergeant Dole, they could fire at either one. There's a bonus because this one's moving, but this would also put the second line squad out of range. So I think we're gonna have them fire here at the infantry squad and Sergeant Tremley, see if we can do kind of double damage here. So and we also wanna be concerned a little bit about this Piat here because if that gets in range, we're in trouble. So Sergeant Dolis and a second line infantry squad with the machine gun firing at the infantry squad here. Let's figure out the attack. Basically, the strength is two for the machine gun, which is in range and one for the squad. So giving them a firepower of three. Now they're firing over degrading terrain. So that subtracts one from their dice roll, that's minus one, and that's really the only modifier here. There's nothing else that's going to impact this firing, so it's three uh, minus one in, on their die roll that they're getting. All right, so let's see what happens here with the Germans on their firing. Uh, <laughs> one plus three is four, minus one is three for the Germans. Not a very effective firing shot here by the Germans. The Canadians now, they are in clear terrain. There's no bond, they're spotted, so there's no bend, they're not covering, and they don't have a covering card they could play to kind of to hunker down here. So basically, it's their straight up card. They need to beat a three in order to suffer this. They get a six, which is a really good pull for them. Now also, I realize we pulled up a one here for the Germans on fire, and we have to check again to see if this machine gun breaks. So for this one, on a one or a two, the machine gun breaks, which would be very, that would be bad for the Germans here. And they do, they get a one. So the machine gun is broken. We're gonna turn it sideways to indicate that, and that means they need to repair it in order to be able to fire it again which creates all kinds of problems for the Canadians, for, for the Germans. Now, quick aside, I, once again, I forgot to pull down the card they're using. They're using a fire card. The Germans use a fire card to conduct that action. So I have to make sure I do that at the start here. I'm looking at them, seeing them, and forgetting to include them in the conversation. But, so the Germans now have the problem of trying to fix the machine gun. They could do that if the leader has a ready action. Sergeant Dolis doesn't, so we can't really do anything with that. We have a ready card up here that they can use, but not in this segment, because they use their face to fire. So. They're gonna to have to deal with that problem in the future. Sergeant Dolis, however, has his action right here. He can do recon or remove one fatigue. Now they did fire, so their fatigue goes up to level two. So we're gonna have Sergeant Dolis just expend this recon card to do a spend action. And one of his special abilities is to remove one fatigue. So he's gonna remove one of those two fatigues on the German unit. And Sergeant Dolis in his second line infantry squad position, uh, position becoming a little bit more precarious here. The machine gun has broken with a terrible shot they made. We're gonna draw two cards to get them up to full capacity in their deck here, five cards right now. They get a melee, melee, melee and a unit action. So let's go now to the Canadian's turn. All right, so first up, we're going to execute this uh, in this movement here by this Canadian squad. So they are going to move up in here. We already added the fatigue to it. <clears throat> we're gonna draw a train and they, have, they can, now they could refuse this train if it's really bad. Brush, they're gonna take it. That gives them a defensive value of one. It's degrading terrain, which is, is good, but that defensive value is, is, I think, you know, as best as they could get right now. Because they moved into it, they are spotted. And let's ready Sergeant Tremley over here. Tremley over here, and he is in clear terrain, ready to go. Now the question is, what do we do with our Canadians' action? All right, so the Canadians, we could have them move forward, which not, might not be a bad idea, but I think we're gonna take a little bit of a long shot here and have them open fire with our infantry squad, Sergeant Tremley, and the Piat down here. So let's take care of this action as we go through it. Now, this is the first time that we've seen an ordnance uh, 
weapon fire. And you can basically fire this weapon as part of a general fire action in, in this, for this infantry squad. So they're going to open fire and a couple of the guys are going to use the piat to open fire with that. So an ordnance weapons works like this. There's a band of three numbers down here and these determine the ranges. The first one, the red one here, is if the range is one to two, which applies to our case. The second one is if the range is three to five and then the white is longer than five. So we can see the piat can't fire at longer than range five, but our range to the farmhouse is two sectors. So we're going to use this red number here. And there's two numbers here, a seven and a three. The three is a penetration value if you're firing against armored units, which we're not. So we're not going to concern ourselves with that. The only one we have to deal with right now then is a seven. And this is a two dice check. So we have to get a seven or less to hit the infantry squad and Sergeant Dolas in their position in the farmhouse. However, there's modifiers. Now there's three modifiers that apply to this attack with the Piat, None of, only one of which is actually helpful. One is we're firing across this degrading terrain, so it's going to add one to the die roll. Second, uh, the farmhouse defense value is two, so we're going to add two to the die roll. So we need a seven plus three, which means we need a four or less to hit, a long shot. However, Sergeant Trumley's leadership rating also applies to this shot. So basically, we, get, we can apply it to either one. We're going to apply it to this one, the infantry squad, or this ordnance weapon. We're going to apply it to the ordnance weapon, which means we need a five or less. And if it hits, it's really effective. It's like a direct hit with the Piat. So it's going to cause some problems for the Germans. It could really change the nature of this battle. So Sergeant Tremblay's infantry squad take aim with the Piat. They need a five or less on two, di on two dice here. Oh, they fail. They get a six with the first one and a two is an eight. So the Piat shot goes sailing wide of the farmhouse. No damage to the Germans who thankfully say, ah, that just missed us. Now let's go for our infantry squad firing here. So infantry squad opens fire. Their attack rate power is a one and it's degraded by one. So it's gonna be minus one for that because they're firing over the stream, which kind of provides a little bit of obstruction there. The farmhouse applies in the defensive role. Sergeant Tremley cannot apply his modifier because he used it in the modification of the Piat firing. So it's just the one minus one as we pick it. So it's basically gonna be the value of this card. Hopefully the infantry squad get off a good shot. A four, that's above average. Not kind of what they needed here because the, the Germans are in pretty good defensive terrain. Now from the, the Germans' perspective right now, they are hunkered down in the farmhouse. They're, they have no they're spotted, they can't, they don't have any covering action to kind of hunker down even more that they could play. So it's basically the card minus two, uh, plus two for their, their role here. So they need to beat a four, they get a five and a, four, a two is a seven. Canadian firing is totally ineffective and the Germans have survived. And that does add a fatigue level to the infantry squad here. So yeah, all around ineffective for the Canadians here. We can do one more thing. So we're actually not gonna have Sergeant Tromley do anything this turn. He can, to perform a leader action, he could ready or kind of conceal the unit, but we're not gonna do that because they're gonna fire and we, I don't wanna burn, we can't remove that fatigue. So we're gonna end the Canadian's turn by drawing up a new card. They get a movement card, which could be helpful for them. Let's go now to the German's turn. So the Germans don't have any pre-turn preparation except for Sergeant Dolis uh, getting ready here for action. The biggest problem the Germans have is the machine gun is a linchpin of their defense and it's broken. So we are going to have them play this ready card because Sergeant Dolis doesn't have the ready ability so we can't use him to fix the machine gun. So we're going to have the Germans play a rally which they can't really use because their morale, they're not broken. It's a big card, but we really need to try to fix the machine gun. And they can use the ready action, so the second line infantry squad, not very good at it, using the ready action to try to fix the machine gun. So the ready, the repair of the machine gun, you need a five or a six, and you can apply a leadership modifier, but Sergeant Dolis' leadership modifier is a zero. He's got no clue, so he kind of stands by and watches. The infantry squads frantically try to fix their broken machine gun. This could be, really, their fates could handle on whether they can fix this. They need a five or a six to get it, they get a three. They do not fix their machine gun. That's bad mojo for the Germans here. Now, Sergeant Dolis, we can perform an action with him. We desperately need another ready card in order to be able to try to fix it again. We're gonna have Sergeant Dolis burn through this uh, movement action here to do a couple things. One, he can remove the fatigue on the unit, which is gonna be helpful. And we get to draw another card. That fatigues him, so we're gonna put him, that spends him there. We're gonna draw two cards. Hopefully the Germans hoping to get a ready action. They get a unit action, which doesn't really help them here. Because yeah, they can't ready themselves. This is a bad situation the Germans are in suddenly. 
and a wind action and a movement action, neither of which really are what they were looking for. So the Germans might have to go it without the machine gun for a little bit here. Let's go on now to the Canadians' turn. All righty, Canadians up. Let's think about what they want to do. Now, we've got a bunch of options here, but I think with the machine gun broken, we want to press the advantage. And rather than move forward with this infantry squad, it's going to, it's going to take a couple turns for them to clear this stream, which is in the way. Let's have our infantry squad here push forward because we might get good terrain here, which could really change the nature of the battle. And now, they could put in, form an assault move, but they're already fatigued too. And an assault move with fatigue too uh, would basically be pretty that'd be pretty disadvantage, disadvantageous odds. There'd be like at a minus four to, to do that attack. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna play an infantry squad movement attack action up here. Now this is going to expend, they're gonna be spent at the end of this because they're at fatigue level two. So they're gonna be exhausted and need to recover up there, but we have a card to take care of that. But they are going to move. They are spotted. And I think what we'll do now, just to kind of indicate that they are spent at the end of this move, I'm gonna put them as spent once they get there. So we'll just turn it sideways to kind of figure that out. So they are moving forward. We're gonna take a chance on what terrain is up there. And that burns through that movement card. Let's also burn through one more card here. I'm gonna need the ready. I might need the melee here too. Definitely want the rake. We're actually gonna use this assault card here. We're gonna play that for Sergeant Tromley to use his leader action, which is to ready a unit, removing one fatigue from this infantry squad, which fired in the last time, because they can perhaps lay down some more suppressive fire. With that, the Canadians are done. Let's go to the Germans' turn. Germans are a little bit in a bind here because Sergeant Dolas at the beginning of the turn will get ready. We could drop Woods terrain down, but there's nothing really that we want to do there. So, and they can't fix their machine gun until they get a ready action card. And all five of their cards, none of them have a ready action card on it. Sergeant Dolas doesn't have the ready ability to fix the machine gun. So they're kind of stuck with the broken machine gun for right now. I think their best option is to fire and hope for the best here. Now, one thing I wanted to mention too, and someone asked the question in the last episode, is how are casualties extracted? When the first damage a unit takes, the unit is shaken and you drop a shaken counter on it. And that's true whether it's a leader or whether it's an infantry squad. Um, if a shaken leader takes uh, more casualties, it's removed from the game. He's assumed to be dead or kind of fled or something like that. If a shaken squad takes uh, casualties, then you replace it with its uh, half squad equivalent. So if this German second squad gets shaken and then shaken again, then they're going to be replaced with the half line squad, the second line half squad. If this is is shaken and uh, suffers damage, it's removed from play and the unit's eliminated. And there are some factors where if you get a kind of extraordinarily high levels of damage, which can happen if you get a pretty good shot with some uh, kind of high firepower, then a unit can suffer, be shaken and uh, reduced to half or even reduced, uh, eliminated from the game in one firing round if the firepower is so overwhelmingly and well executed. So that's a little bit on how casualties work. But let's go to Sergeant Dolis now. They are going to Let's have them perform a unit action here to have the second line infantry squad open fire. Now let's think about what their target should be. I feel like the biggest threat over here right now is this infantry squad moving um, through the brush and they're, it's not, without the machine gun, they're kind of ineffective, but we'll, let's see, one, two, three, yeah, they're in range of everything now too. So let's have the machine, let's have the second line squad fire up over here. So the, the modifiers on this tack, we've got uh, one firepower. This squad is moving and attacking, firing against a, a target that's designated as moving adds one, so it's plus one, but they have degrading terrain, which is minus one, and that's it for the firepower attack. So they need a good shot. The Germans have not had good attacks here. Now they get one, a six. That's an extraordinarily good shot. Six plus one is a seven on this infantry squad here. This could change, this could help the Germans considerably. So the, the, the Canadians here need a, they've got a defensive value, they're spotted, they're not concealed, and they're moving forward here in brush, they get one, so it's their card plus one. They need an extraordinarily good defensive draw here. They get a three plus one is a four. So six to four, oh, sorry, seven to four, is a plus three damage check for this squad here. This creates some problems for the Canadian infantry on the move. Their check is a five, and we're gonna add four to the die roll here. This is probably pretty bad. A four plus three is seven. Did I get that right? Yes, okay. Yeah, just checking the numbers there. So seven 
It was a seven against a four. Three plus one is a four, so it's a plus three. Four plus three is a seven. They do not pass. So our infantry, Canadian infantry here, is shaken by the German uh, second line squad firing here. Good job by the Germans. That helps a ton. Now, the second line squad gets a fatigue marker for doing that, and we are going to play this uh, melee card to expend Sergeant Dolis here to put him to a spent state, and he is going to do some recon once again. Now, we will draw two cards for them and pick whichever one we'd like the best here. We get clear and brush. We're gonna keep the clear because that's got a defensive value of zero. I'm not sure how we'll use it yet, but it, it could be of value to the Germans here at some point. So let's draw them back up to full strength. They get a fire and a ready unit. That's perfect. This ready card they just drew is going to be nice because they can try to fix the machine gun again. So a little bit of a good, actually a significantly good turn here for the Germans on that one. One last thing I forgot to do before we finished up the German turn. They rolled a six on their firepower attack. That means they have an out of ammunition check. They draw a card. If it's a six, they are out of ammunition. They get a two, they're okay. So that finishes up the German turn. So the first thing we do as we go to the Canadians turn is we are going to execute this move. Now, even though they're shaken and a shaken unit can't move closer to the enemy because they designated the move before they were shaken, they finish this move here. So we're gonna return the movement marker. We're gonna take that off. Now I've taken off that fatigue level two marker because they are completely spent. So they're spent and they're shaken and we have to determine the terrain they go into. Hoping for something good for the Canadians Oh, this is fantastic for them. A stone building, very nice. So they found kind of like an, a, kind of a, the remains of a building off to the side of the farmhouse here, which puts them in a really nice position considering how exhausted and broken up mentally they are. That will help their survivability a lot because even if they aren't able to rally from this right away, the firing of this machine gun on the stone building is, is gonna be a little bit harder for the Germans to execute. Now, we also bring Sergeant Tremley up here to full readiness, and now it's time for the Canadians to decide what to do. One, one little detail before we have the Canadians act, this terrain is not next to any units, so we should clear it up and remove it from the game. So we'll do that. Now, I think what we're going to have the Canadians do here, they have this card that allows them to both uh, ready a unit and do a unit action, and they can be in any order on different units too. So we're gonna bring that into play. Let's, first up, we're going to ready this infantry squad here. Now, there's a lot of things a shaken unit can't do. They can't fire on the Germans, and they can't really do anything productively in attack terms. But we can ready them, and so get ready for when they get, we need a rally card, basically, for them to, to be able to do anything productive. But since they're in the stone building, and by the way, they are also spotted because they moved into it, um, I think we're gonna do is just assume that they're gonna be okay until we can get them a rally card. In the meantime, Let's have, take another shot here with Sergeant Tremley, his infantry squad, and the Piat to see if they can get lucky. So we're gonna do like we did before. We're gonna use that, the, basically this unit action, so the ready action on this squad, then the unit action to fire this squad down here. We're gonna have the Piat fire separately, and we're gonna add Sergeant Tremley's leadership bonus modifier to this. Same role as before. They needed a seven, but because of the farmhouse, it's minus two, so they need, plus two added, so they need a seven with a two die roll modifier added to it. Uh, plus more, one more for the strength, the degrading train they're firing across. So that's plus three. Sergeant Tremlay reduces that by one, so plus two. So the infantry squad takes aim with the Piat. They need a five or less to hit. Hopefully they get better luck than the last time. A three, they're still in luck, a one or a two, and this will hit. This could change the course of the battle. Five and eight. Once again, the Piat goes whistling over the farmhouse and the Germans fortunately escape that deadly fate. Now let's have the infantry squad open up fire. So basically this is not the greatest shot. The infantry squad has an attack power of one. They're firing over degrading terrain, which subtracts one from it. So basically it's one minus one, which is a zero, plus whatever they get on this die attack. They need a big number here, a four. They got the last time too, above average firing. Now, the Germans in the farmhouse here have a defensive factor of two. So they're going to pull this die, this die roll and they need whatever they get plus two. That's the only modifier that's on it. Now, a low roll here could be deadly for them. They get a six, so they uh, do fine as well. So <laughs> the, both shots by the Canadians miss again. We've had some, uh, you know, statistically, I think we've had some pretty weak firing from both sides here. Lots of ones to break the machine gun and stuff like that. Um, 
By the way, there is a weapon broken counter for this. The turning it sideways means it's out of ammo. Uh, there's a weapon broken uh, counter for that that I've dropped onto this before to clean that up. So the Canadians have once again fruitlessly burned through some ammunition, trying to hit the Germans in the farmhouse but failing. They have readied this squad, but they're shaken and rather ineffective. And they are starting to run out of time. We've got about a third of our action deck left. So with about two thirds of the battle done, the Canadians really well, they're drawing closer. They have not yet successfully put any pressure on the farmhouse here. Now, Sergeant Trimley really doesn't have anything he can do with an action, so we're not gonna do anything for him. We're gonna draw the Canadians back up. They're looking for a rally card. They get a unit action card, which doesn't help them because we gotta rally this infantry squad over here. Now, we could have Sergeant Trimley move over there, but that's gonna take a month of Sundays to get up there. That's not really gonna work. So, let's go now to the Germans' turn. So I'm guessing that this episode right now is about a half an hour and we still have about a third of the deck left. So I'm going to kind of decide that we're gonna kind of hold now and come back for a final dramatic part three conclusion to this to see what finally happens with the attack on the farmhouse. Now it could very well be that the Canadians run out of time and that would assume that they fall back from their positions and weren't able to take it in a timely manner because the, the Germans have been able to effectively kind of hold up without suffering any damage yet. Canadian infantry fire, and the Piat firing has been ineffective. It just been a lot of misses here. A couple quick comments on this too. Uh, the last time I played this as I was playing it as a practice one, it went much faster and the troops, the airborne troops that I used to attack got pretty much annihilated on the road a good distance away from the farmhouse. So this time has been much more deliberate and that's kind of what you get with the terrain and the firepower. Things can play out very differently each time you play. The second note is that, you know, this has been, I think the first episode was about 45 minutes, spent about a half an hour. It's about an hour and 15 minutes total so far with probably about another half an hour to go. Um, however, if I were playing, making a video takes about three times as long with this. I'm finding that I'm explaining a lot of things. It's taking more time to talk things through. We did an overview at the beginning. You know, if I think I'm playing this straight through, even as deliberate as this episode's been and kind of how uh, little damage has happened so far, my guess is it's probably gonna have taken about 25, 30 minutes to have played out this much if I weren't recording it and creating a video for it right now. So don't let the length of the video uh, deceive you in terms of the length of the gameplay. With that being said, we will be back in episode three for our conclusion. Can the Canadians finally take the farmhouse? Will the Germans continue to hold? We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye.